You know what day it is. It's Bowtie Friday. Welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the stories we have for you tonight. Make a wish foundations send one family to Disney World. Government health user must get checkup. And Mango Melee highlights. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. TV8 News is brought to you by Total Excellium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn. In our top story, the Make-A-Wish Foundation granted one young girl's wish to visit Disney World. News Channel 8 cameras was at Henry Roslyn Airport to welcome her and her family back. We're here with Make-A-Wish Foundation to receive Gabrielle. What's your name again? Angelique. Angelique, how was your trip? It was fine. Tell me a little bit about your trip. We went to Disney World and we saw Mickey, Minnie, and his friends. The trip was great. Uh, the, the, the kids them had a great time at Disney World, Universal Studios, Sea World. It was awesome. Uh, they are. Uh, the, the people that gave the, the kids village was very helpful. It was, it was awesome. I'd like to thank Make-A-Wish for, you know, doing this for our family, you know. Uh, it was a needed trip, and Gabriel will surely benefit from it. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mom, what about you? Uh, we had fun. It was lots of fun. We get to see all the characters, and it was nice. <laughs> so thank you, guys. Well, you can call Ileana at 772-5078 or myself, Vivian Furet at 513-8145. There's also a website that you could get um, on the internet and fill out the application for Make-A-Wish. The richest family is going to be taken home now in the limo that's here waiting on them. So the good time isn't over as yet until they, we take them back home. We pick them up and we bring them here, so we have to take them back home safely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Asana and this is Asana from News Channel 8. That sounds great. Welcome back. In other news, the Virgin Islands Division of Personnel, Financial Management Supervisor Rochelle Benjamin said those insured by the VI government health insurance need mandatory health risk assessments by mid-September so they won't face a $20 per paycheck fine or a $500 per year fee. The assessment allows for the early identification and treatment of participants before their conditions may become chronic or even fatal. Benjamin said it also helps the government collect actual data, she added. Meanwhile, police on St. Thomas are interviewing a 37-year-old man that probably shot himself in the leg. Melanie Rames has more details. Police on St. Thomas are interviewing a 37-year-old man who was shot in his leg while sitting in the Subway restaurant in Tutu Park Mall. Police said their investigation revealed that after the man was shot, he left the business rather quietly and drove himself to the Schneider Regional Medical Center for treatment. The incident occurred a few minutes after 7 p.m. on July 10th. Several patrons were in the restaurant and told police that they heard the gunshot and then saw a man limping out the door. Police spoke to the victim at the hospital, who initially told them that he did not know who shot him and he doesn't know why anyone would want to shoot him. Officers said self-inflicted gunshots happen often and victims usually blame unknown persons for the incidents. Officers also said the victim most likely disposed of the weapon before going to the hospital. Detectives from the Criminal Investigation Bureau will continue to investigate this matter. Well, tonight we continue our tour of Sager Farm, where we caught up with two chefs, where they are planning 
a farm to table dinner. That's right, from the farmland straight to the dinner table. We are here at Sage Farm. We are partnering with uh, Salud Bristol, and it's a collaboration of Sage Farm, myself, which is Dale Brown, Yvette Brown, Chef Digby, and Chef Skerritt. Chef Skerritt is the owner of Salud Bristol. Now, what we are doing, we're doing a farm to table dinner. The dinner is going to consist of everything that is local. Everything that is grown at Sager Farm or coming from another farm. This is a, a, a thing that we're trying to do as regular as possible. But one of the, th one of the reasons also we're doing it is because these two chefs are traveling to Italy along with Yvette, representing the Virgin Islands. Under um, St. Croix of Virgin Islands, Slow Food International. Slow Food International is basically um, an organization that, uh, that shows that local food could be enhanced, it could be made um, viable through agricultural production, and that these chefs, they are the culinary artists. So we're going to take local food on this night. Uh, that's Saturday, July 12th. And the first uh, seating is at 6 o'clock. And you get hot, hot, hot herbs at 5.30. And we are looking for as many attendants as possible. This is a collaboration that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. And I'm glad, you know, that finally got together with Dale and Sage Our Farms to put this together. I mean, I think we're going to put our collaboration together, our heads together, and come up with a great meal for all you guys to come out and try it. And I promise you, you will enjoy this. And the atmosphere in Salud is always great. We're just going to make it a little better. So I want you all to come on out, support us, support everyone here, support the farmers. They work hard, and you know it. You see their products, beautiful products, tasty. And that's what I like to put in my menu. So I give it out to Digby. How's it going? Like you said, this is a collaboration that's been, it's been, a, while in the, been a while in the making. Uh, we, we both got our best foot forward. We have really good ingredients to start with. Uh, if you've seen the menu, you can check it out on Facebook, Instagram. It's going to be really cool. We got the Sage of Farm. We're going to take the lamb and we're going to smoke it with sugar cane, a little bit of banana leaves, give something that uh, maybe the world's never seen before. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have fun and uh, hope to see everybody come out and support. This is uh, Chef George. Uh, Chef George is part of uh, Slow Food International, as Yvette is the director for uh, Safan and merging that where they're going to take this um, event, both Digby and, Sh and George, to Italy. So Virgin Islands will be represented above and beyond the, the best. Hi, George Satig, a uh, member of the Virgin Islands culinary team. Um, we plan to do a lot more of these. Uh, this is the first one starting at Salud Bistro. And uh, we are also planning a, a, a rum tasting uh, flight with various different courses to, to go along with the different rums, uh, using the rums that are made here and and, uh, and maybe a few others from uh, some other uh, Caribbean islands. Uh, we're going to tend to do this maybe two or three times a month if we can and, uh, and go to Italy and, and, and represent and uh, attempt to show the world what, uh, what the Virgin Islands and, and St. Thomas and St. Croix has to offer. Stay with us. We have more news coming up next. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Welcome back to News Channel 8. And now here is Alexis Barnes with your Caribbean report. Thanks, Junior. Good evening. This is Alexis Barnes with your Caribbean Report. In St. Lucia, the water crisis continues. The St. Lucia Water and Sewerage Company, or WASCO, placed the entire island under a water emergency schedule starting Wednesday as the drought worsened. Company Managing Director Vincent Hippolyte told reporters, despite the rains and the greenery, drought conditions exist because the rivers are not moving. They do not have the volume of water that will enable Wasco to extract sufficient water to meet demand of the consumers. The island-wide water rationing program will remain in effect with communities experiencing periodic water outages. Experts estimate the drought will last until the end of August, urging citizens to conserve. World Bank Managing Director and Chief Operating Officer 
Sri Mulyani Idrawati visited Haiti for three days and commended the government for the progress in the country's recovery. The World Bank praised the nation, but also called for an increase in equality in the economic and social opportunities for all Haitians, especially in rural areas. Indrawati told reporters, the Haiti I saw over the last days is very different from the country I saw during my visit in the aftermath of the devastating earthquake. I am encouraged by the visible progress. In Barbados, the University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus, along with a China partner, is welcoming its newest installation, a Confucius Institute. These nonprofit public teaching organizations promote and teach cultural exchange, Chinese language, and culture. Discussions between the Barbados Minister of Education and representatives of China University of Political Science and Law began in 2009. Minister Ronald Jones told members of the discussion, We in Barbados try to pay a lot of attention to education, for it is one of the leading social indicators for the country. This has been tonight's Caribbean Report. I'm Alexis Barnes in for Cynthia Graham, who will be back on Monday. Have a great weekend. Junior, back to you. Thank you very much, Alexis. Farmer Walter Hodge shares with us the importance of some of our local fruits grown right here, right here in the territory. Hey, here we have Mr. Hodge, and he's a local farmer, and he's going to explain to you about the different local fruits that we have here growing in the Virgin Islands. This is many of the fruits that I, when I was growing up, that I, that I ate on my way growing up, okay? Number one, I had the locust to you couple days ago and this locust here I understood that you could even make a shake out of it. Mr. Hodge, yeah. what do you know about the locust? The locust that I know of is the same fruit that John the Baptist they talked about in the Bible which has all the 23 amino acids. It's a complete meal with honey and it, and it, and it is very rich and high in protein. One of the best products on the island but the, the, the people refuse to eat it because they say it's stinking too. But it's a natural antioxidant and a natural bodybuilder. Can you just explain and about this, the carambola? This, the carambola is very good for uh, flushing the bodies of um, poisons, of any kind of um, toxins that are in the, in the stomach, anything to do with flushing and cleaning the body. And it's very good for the eyes too. Okay. Uh, well, on my way growing up, this was one of my main fruits when I just, when I come to find out that um you know star uh, star, 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 fruit. star fruit can eat, believe it. This was one of my favorite and still one of my favorite. This here, the can they say the bacoba? Yeah, we, bacoba. Yeah, bacoba is full of potassium and it's good for um for your eyesight too, and it's good for your bone structure and your skeleton, for your whole skeleton structure. Mm. It's good for your for your eyes. Or just a part, any part of your body. So that's why we should be eating more and more of bananas because bananas are also a cancer-fighting agent. People don't understand it, but they got to realize that we got to stop taking the pills and stop eating these things from the shops because remember this, the people that put you in slavery will never give up good food. So you have to grow your own food so we could always be healthy. That is why our people are not healthy because we are importing foods. Come to find out, this thing was growing for two years. And the reason why it's so stunt is because we are lack of water. That's why I understand. You could tell me a little bit about this pineapple? Well, to tell, to tell you the truth, the pineapple is one of the best fruits we could grow in the Virgin Islands because once it's, the land is proud properly and it's planted properly, it doesn't really need that much care. Once you give it a little water once a week, it will grow profusely in the Virgin Islands. And I don't understand why the, the, the Department of Agriculture or our people them have not invested in this. This is, a, this is a fruit that we should be selling and exporting because of its many, 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 many um, vitamin qualities and properties it has in it. Well, one local fruit that is very popular in our island is the mango. And this past weekend at the annual Mango Melee, they had their annual mango eating competition. Let's take a look.
complain if we need to do guys and girls. I think the girls are gonna, they're holding their own on this. Yeah, they're holding their own on this. We got a couple of them already through one whole mango. suffer a little bit from this. <laughs> it's all worth it. Mangoes are yummy. Yes? We're all here because we love mangoes. Yes? Well, if that doesn't make you hungry, nothing will. We have more news straight ahead. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Now here he is, Mr. David with the Weekend Firewalk. Hey, this is David the Firewalker. Are you ready? Because I am ready. Saturday, July 12th, we're walking from Shangbal Park to Kane Bay. We start exactly 5 a.m. sharp. Be there by 4.30, 4.45 is warm-up time. I repeat, Shangbal Park to Kane Bay, 4, 4.30. Be there at 4.45 for warm-up time, and we leave exactly 5 o'clock, sharp. And remember, we have the bus this Saturday. So that's the good thing about it. So when, if, when the walk is finished, the bus will take you back to your vehicle, so you won't have a problem. Come on out and enjoy this walk. The, remember, the walk is good for diabetes, stress, high blood pressure, you name it. The walk is good for everything. The walk is July 12, starting from Shangbal Park to Kane Bay. Don't be late. Don't go anywhere. We have your weather coming up next. Your weather coming up next. Your weather tonight. Isolated showers mostly clear with a low around 72. East wind 16 to 18 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. Saturday, isolated showers, sunny with a high near 83. East wind around 14 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. Saturday night, isolated showers, mostly clear with a low around 69. East wind around 15 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 
On Sunday, isolated showers, sunny with a high near 89. East wind 11 to 13 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. This is Cheryl Francis with your Channel 8 News Weather. Thank you very much for tuning in. It brings us to the end of another exciting Bowtie Friday. Do not forget to like us on Facebook at WSVI CHA. Also, do not forget to follow us on Twitter at WSVI TV News. You can also catch us on YouTube at WSVI TV News. Follow us anywhere in the world using the Free Dish Anywhere app. You can even DVR us. Use your smartphone or tablet to see us anywhere in the world. Well, that's it for local news. I'm Junior Garcia. And World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. TV8 News was brought to you by Total Excelium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn.